here is a typical rook endgame that you're likely to see over and over again in your games. White is a pawn up and the rest of the pawns are on the king's side. Now, would that be enough to win the game or not? It doesn't really matter whether it's white to play or black to play. Is this the winning advantage? Well, take a moment to have a look at the position, evaluate the position and try to work out a plan to um, win the game for white. And if your assessment is that white is winning, you're absolutely right. Now, after I show you the plan for white and what is that you need to do, you will be able to win this position in your sleep each time against the strongest possible play players on the planet. So how to win this sort of a position? Well, first of all, you need to observe that very important principle of two weaknesses which says that one weakness is not enough to win the game, you need to create the second one. And here, one weakness is very evident. It's the lack of a pawn. White is a pawn up. That alone might not be enough to win the game, because the rook is correctly positioned behind the pawn, stopping this pawn from becoming a queen. It would be easier if white had this sort of a situation, because then white has any number of moves, and um, every time black makes a rook move, this pawn would move forward. But that's not the case. This look, rook is positioned behind the pawn. And so black is at the moment successfully stopping this pawn from becoming a queen. Here is the plan. This is what you need to do. One weakness, as I said, is evident, but the second one is not. And so um, you will need to create the second weakness in order to win this sort of position. Now, which pawn is potentially weak? Well, this pawn on h5 certainly isn't because there is no way of getting through to it. The pawn on g7, it's pretty much impossible to attack it successfully because it is so deep in black's position. This pawn on f6 is protected by the pawn and the king. And here we go, this pawn on e5 is the only potential weakness. The whole thing is done in three stages. The first stage, you need to immobilize this rook. You need to make it impossible for this rook to pick up the pawns. And you do this by advancing this pawn all the way to a7. There is no way that black can stop you. So the first move can be something like a5, king h7, rook a8, king g6, a6, king h7, a7, king back to g6. There is nothing black can do to stop you from doing this. In fact, if black king now starts going after this pawn in order to take it, well, the moment this pawn goes to e7, the winning move is going to be rook g8, because the threat will be queening the pawn, and when black takes the pawn, white will take on g7 and win the rook. Therefore, the best strategy for black is really just to wait and play king h7, king g6 and see what is that white will come up with. But now that the pawn has gone to a7, this rook is no longer free to wander and pick up any loose pawns here or there. This rook forever has to stay on the a file and keep an eye on this pawn. Because moving rook anywhere would result in an immediate win for what? The rook would move out of the way, now you can't stop the pawn from queening. So the first stage is complete. The rook is now on a7. The second stage, creating a weak pawn. All you need to do is to basically attack this pawn on e5, and we are going to do that by playing g3. Black plays a move, and the next move is f4. Black now has a choice. Black can do nothing or swap off the two pawns. Now, if black swaps off the two pawns, well, then winning is really quite easy because all you need to do is to keep advancing this pawn. Rook can't stop it because you have stretched the defense beyond its limit. Now, this, this rook cannot at the same time keep an eye on this pawn and on the other pawn as well. So if this pawn is taken, rook just moves out of the way 
and um, this other pawn will become a queen. And um, it is also not possible for the king to come close to this pawn and control it, because the moment the king starts moving, well, it will be possible to give a check, promote this pawn into the queen, which means that really black is out of options here. Uh, very, very easy win for white. If black exchanges those two pawns, all you need to do if the pawns are exchanged, is to keep on advancing this pawn and you will have an easy win. So black's optimal de defense is, once again, to do nothing. And just to wait. Play king g6 again. But when white takes on e5 and black takes on e5, well, see, now there is a potentially weak pawn and all white needs to do now is to go and pick up that pawn. That is done with a long march of the king. At the moment, the rook is um, making it impossible for this king to approach the pawn, but the rook can't stay there for long because um, the business of this rook is to always keep an eye on the pawn a7. So king b1, rook has to move out of the way. Now you're going to keep approaching and eventually chase the rook away from that square as well. And now we are ready to attack the pawn. King c5. Well, let's play black plays a move like this. Rook a6. You attack the pawn. Black gives you a check. So it seems that black is successfully defending because this rook is keeping an eye on the a7 pawn and at the same time, the rook is defending the pawn on e5. But that's when we introduce the new element into the game, and that's Zugzwang. In the Zugzwang situations, your opponent would dearly love to pass the move to you, but that can't be done according to the rules of chess. So black has to move, and no matter what black does, it's going to lead to a worse position for black. If the rook moves out of the way, well, the pawn will fall. If the rook moves to protect the pawn, then the rook will not be able to stop this pawn from queening. The only remaining option is to move the king. But with the next move, white king is going to deny the black the opportunity of coming back to g6. King f5, putting black into complete zugzwang. Black has only one move at his disposal, and that is to give this check on g6. And after king f6, black is completely out of moves. If the king moves to h6, there will be an immediate checkmate. And um, if the rook moves to protect the pawn, this back pawn becomes a queen, which means that the rook really needs to move out of the way, stop protecting the pawn, and then all white needs to do is move the king out of the way and keep advancing until this pawn hits e8 and becomes promoted into the queen. And this is how you win the endgame with an extra pawn. Now, before we close on this position, let me just go back to the beginning and ask you another question related to this position. As you can see, this is an easy win for white. What if you remove those two pawns? Can white still win the game? Well, not really, because it is not possible to create a second weakness. And this position would actually be a very easy draw for black. Easy win for white, easy draw for black. The only difference is whether it's possible or not possible to create a second weakness. And this is how you win with an extra pawn in the rook and game.